Well, you authorized this break-in, didn't you? I was trying to... No, sir, I did not. Uh, you affirmed it yesterday in a memorandum that I saw. You said it was your signature, provided it could not be traced. No, sir, I, I submit that that is not what that memorandum says. Document. What that memorandum says is that the investigation, which had previously been authorized by me, should also include an attempt to ascertain the contents of these files. There's nothing in there about the means to be pursued, and my testimony was and continues to be that my assumption was that that could be done by completely conventional investigatory means. I read the language, covert operation to be undertaken to examine all of the medical files still held by Ellsberg psychiatrist. How do you think you could examine all the medical files without a break-in? Well, uh, it has occurred to me since, because I've been asked this question before, that uh, one way that it could be done is through uh, false pretenses. Through, uh, or through perfectly, uh, or through perfectly honest, through perfectly honest means, uh, one doctor to another by recruiting the assistance of another of another psychiatrist or of a doctor or of a uh, of someone who uh, could get at them that way. Now, if the president could authorize a covert break-in, and you don't know exactly where that power would be limited, if you don't think it could include murder. Other crimes beyond covert break-ins, do you? Oh, I don't. I don't know where the line is, Senator. Well, where is the check on the chief executive's inherent power as to where that power begins and ends? That's what I'm trying to determine. Well, again, I would have to incorporate by reference the, I think, the very valuable discussion that has taken place here this morning. I couldn't add to that. Well, you're a lawyer, and I understand you're a good. One. Well, I'm certainly not a constitutional lawyer, Senator. Well, you remember and when we were in it. law school, we studied a famous principle of law that came from England and also is well known in this country, that no matter how humble a man's cottage is, that even the king of England can't enter without his consent. I'm afraid that's been considerably eroded over the years, hasn't it? Down in my country, we still think it's pretty legitimate <laughs> principle of law. <laughs>